So you have to ask yourself, why if I apply a counterclockwise force vector image to the clockwise spinning gyroscopic flywheel, will the gyroscope levitate? You can see it go vertical at some points. I'm actually drawing a hypertrochoid counterclockwise. You'll see the gyroscope flywheel go vertical. Once in a while, the, uh, the string torque will obviously have to work its way out. But if I apply a clockwise force, of course the gyroscope is spinning down. If I apply a clockwise force to the clockwise spinning flywheel, why will I get strong resistance and absolutely no raise at all? As I've told you before in another video, a gyroscopic flywheel is an incoherent mass of atoms with a coherent applied force. Let's let the string unwind itself there a second. Untwist itself. So let's apply a clockwise force from my hand to the clockwise moving gyroscopic flywheel. I'll get very strong resistance. No raise at all. But if I apply a counterclockwise force to the gyroscopic flywheel, why will the gyroscope lose weight? Now, if I actually had this on an articulated arm, as you can see in other videos, which I've had uploaded now for months, you'll actually notice that the entire gyroscopic system will and does lose weight. Yes, it does lose weight. The entire system loses weight. You'll see the flywheel go vertical. Right now it's vertical. You'll see it's usually perpendicular to the ground. There is weight reduction. You can feel it. The gyroscope feels a lot, lot less You actually get the harmonic perfect, kind of like I'm doing right now. Of course, the gyroscope is spinning down. But if you get the harmonic perfect, you can actually feel this very heavy precision gyroscope lose a tremendous amount of weight. Um, now, in the articulated arms, I'm just using a string. Ultimately, there's no difference between this and your articulated arm other than being able to weigh it. But you have to ask yourself, it's time to think. The gyroscopic principle has never been explained. Nobody's ever thought of, well, nobody ever understood magnetism anyway, that inverse uh, force and motion will cancel each other out, just like standing waves will cancel each other out, either additive or they're, uh, or they're, negate, or they're uh, self negating. Um, you either have additive waves or canceling waves. I mean, I'm a ham radio operator. I mean, I learned that back when I was a teenager, taking my ham radio course. But all of that is applicable to a force and motion vectors of the the loss of inertia as expressed in magnetism. And then you have to think not only of uh, force and motion, but you also have to think of coherency. That's step number two. You have to think of force and motion, inertia, and acceleration. Then you have to think of coherency, step number two, as is applied to a polarized uh, mass that is coherent. So it only has to be polarized, but it has to be coherent. In the case of a crude analogy, as I told you in the other video, what we have here is a, uh, is a, uh, a monopole. I mean, I'll, I'll get to a more a better analogy, but for simplex understanding, we could think this think of this as a mass monopole. We can think of it as a force monopole. It is an incoherent mass that, with an applied coherent force. The entire flywheel is spinning either clockwise or counterclockwise. So we have coherency of applied force. If we had better bearings on this uh, precision gyroscope, obviously it would spin longer and we'd have better efficiency, but we only have coherency. Step number three, you have to think of force motion or inertia and acceleration. Secondly, we have to think about coherency. Step number three, we have to think about canceling or additive. As I've already shown you, and you can see a thousand other gyroscopic videos, but of course there's no explanation. There's plenty of demonstrations, but no explanations. Plenty of descriptions too, but no explanations. We have additive applied force. We'll get, in your incorrect terminology, repulsion. 
There's another thing as magnetic repulsion, this is magnetic attraction. The same is true for force. All force all force is uh either additive or uh or uh or uh, canceling. And if I apply an additive force in the same direction, the same force applied force image, I will get uh, repulsion. I will get additional force and motion. That's why if I actually spin this gyroscope clockwise, the flywheel, which is also going clockwise, I'll get strong resistance. As I told you about magnetism, there's uh, only uh, only a dielectric voidance. and There's either force and motion or inertia and acceleration, depending on whether it's uh, cancellation of force or the addition of force. And the same is true of this gyroscopic fly. What I'm doing is I'm applying a force monopole to this monopole. I actually have a coherent clockwise force monopole, for lack of a better analogy currently, just to make things simple for you to understand. An inverse applied, either a likewise or an inverse applied force monopole. So I either get additive force or I get negative force, where I actually have force cancellation in the gyroscope wheel. If it's the same, I'll get resistance if it's inverse applied force, I always have my gyroscopic flywheel spinning clockwise, and if I apply inverse counterclockwise, the gyroscope, as you'll see, will raise. But these two have to work in tandem. The only way this gyroscope is going to lose weight, not by itself, is if I apply a second coherent applied force external to the gyroscopic flywheel. It's really very simple. Um, I'm going to get into a lot more detail. I'm just trying to make these two first two videos very simple. Something you need to think about, it's really important to think about. You've read everywhere, or you may not have read everywhere, about the gyroscopic effect, and uh, of course the two infamous equations uh, for gyroscopic momentum and the uh, the additive uh, or the the additive force vectors of uh, gyroscopic momentum, but uh, that is all extrapolative. In other words, extrapolative force quantification. I'm interested in knowing what is the quality and nature of the gyroscopic effect, what it is, and why, if I apply a uh, external coherent inverse force to the flywheel, I will actually get, unquestionably, there's nobody on Earth that can deny this, I will get a loss of weight. You can actually feel it, of course, and if you stick this on the end of an armature bar, an articulated armature bar, and you spin it inverse to the flywheel, the gyroscope will raise up. You can actually stick this on an articulated arm. You can stick an equal weight on the other side. I've got videos like that. If you want the link, just ask me. I'll give you a link to the videos from uh, Professor Eric Lathwood. If you actually stick a, a, a separate mass on the end of an articulated arm, and you spin them inverse to the gyroscopic force vector, what will happen is that the gyroscope will lift up, and the more force you apply over here, inverse to the force of the gyroscopic flywheel, you will get force cancellation. The gyroscope will raise even higher. There is a maximum point. Ultimately, you have counterspatial acceleration from the Earth. There's only so much that can be canceled. But the principle of co-gravitation, as mentioned by Tesla, and is a unified that... Well, of course, those notes were taken by the government, but there are some uh, you know, bits and pieces here and there uh, from Nikola Tesla about his unified uh, theory of gravity, but also from uh, Oliver Heaviside in his appendix from Electrical Papers on gravitation. Ultimately, as I told you before, there's no such thing as gravitation. Everything is force and motion, inertia and acceleration. And anyway, I'll get into a lot more detail in future videos, but uh, I can assure you that uh, the gyroscopic effect, I will paint a picture for you that there'll be no doubt in your mind that uh, once and for all and uh, for the first time, the gyroscopic effect, what it is, why it is, and how it is, uh, will be lucidly explained in clear detail. Thanks for watching. Have a nice evening.